So I have the great pleasure to introduce Lee Scrivener, uh, who presented and discussed his satiric manifesto, how to write an avant-garde manifesto at the British Library's Breaking the Rules, the printed face of the European avant-garde, 1900 to 1937 exhibition, a show which took place in February this year. And it's an exhibition which has also been very important for Gustav Metzger uh, in relation to all these um, images you always see in the breaks. As I mentioned earlier, for those of you who weren't there earlier, I'd like to mention it again. We've got some permanent pieces. We have uh, Tarin Simon's uh, installation, and we also have Gustav Metzger, um, who uh, intervenes in all the uh, uh, intermissions. Um, Lee Scrivener lectures and writes about many topics, including insomnia, aphorisms, utopian communities, polygamy, epic poetry, literary modernism, and of course, the avant-garde manifesto. He has taught at Burbank University of London, the University of ne Nevada, Las Vegas, and has recently delivered a series of lectures for Resonance FM's Free University of the Airwaves. Please join me in welcoming warmly Lee Scrivener and his manifesto, The Sound Manifesto. This is The Sound Manifesto. Manifesto should have entertainment value, food for thought for hungry throngs, be revolutionary, yet fitting. A manifesto should assure investments of our precious short attention spans, stay sound by seeking funding from the town council. It should be a peerless document of gold on vellum, be widely advertised with carousel orchestras of epic machinery, conveyor belts, gears, cranes, to divvy out research fund grants, enlightenment on railroad ties, with ties to industry a model on which to build a model society. But how, in this disaster, the town hall spectacular collapse, funds run dry from over-speculation. Too light, these two lips, speculative, Every word I say, I'm ruined. This is no way to launch a manifesto. A few forged, vain, fatuous expressions. I am a fraud, Fanny. Fancy laundry, it's our only hope of sustenance. She's so clever, so industrious. I ruined another one. That's the third shirt this week. He must never know that I have 
frittered away our investments on these very unsound vestments. Oh, damn! Are you all right, my dear? No, I'm fine. I pray for deliverance of my child. I pray for deliverance with every morsel of my soul. Who's there? Delivery. It's the delivery, Freddy. The delivery? At this hour? What shall we do? Well, I suppose we should answer it. find you here at your ironing board. Is that you, Freddy? Freddy, where are you? I just stepped out to see you. Uh, how funny. I just stepped out of my workroom to come and see you. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> Fanny, dear. I have exciting news. I have finished with my manifesto. Why, that's wonderful, Freddy. I always knew you could do it. Well, not quite finished. I have discovered that I'm a just a bit short of funds for publication. You know how these vanity presses are. Oh, I don't know anything about all that. That's your area of expertise, my dear. Well, I was wondering if I might just dip a little bit into your investiture, your investment, you know, just to cover the difference, the shortfall. Of course, you may well see a windfall profit all things being equal um, in this windy speculation. Well, it's funny that you should mention that, because 
I was thinking I might ask you the same thing. If I might dip into your funds, your latest national endowment. <laughs> Borrow a bit for a bit of a personal venture, a private purchase. Oh, no. We have to save that. We've got to keep that safe in my little precious porous basket. Anyway, what do you want my funds for when your funds are overflowing? <laughs> but Freddy, this is this purchase is important to me. What do you have in mind, pet? A telescope. A telescope? What on earth for? Oh, no reason on earth, I suppose. Don't you worry about that, my uh, dear boy. Your uh, crisis is so easily solved. Look what you uh, got here. Down at the bottom. Look what you forgot. What is well, let's have a look. Thirty-four billion pounds. That's a lot of money. And at today's credit of uh, 1.778, that's a very fortunate sum. Wow! Yeah, you uh, keep that safe. Yeah? That's my girl. No, 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 don't worry, don't worry. For you, my dear chap, we got something as well. Huh? Okay. That should be about $700 uh, billion. Dollars. That's uh, at a credit rate of 1.001. Uh, a lot of money. It's a miracle! It's a miracle! <laughs> yeah? Exactly how much is the credit worth? Well, you know, there are many, many ways of finding that out. There are interest rates. Debt ratios, graphs, prophecies, some even use tea leaves. Uh, no, what you should do is bring all those things together and put it into the what we call the master equation, which is back in, back in to the system. So, once you've done that, Hook them on here. Everything will fall back into place. And, yes, there you go. And, oh, another one. 
You too. We're going to dance a little bit, round and around, like vines around a trellis. Come on, you can do it. That's the spirit, come on. A bit slower. One by one, they'll fall into place. The time shares sun and run with the cattle without a face. And that will be the rain. The town council came to difficult decisions. They thought the town was tame enough. To give them manumission, so two by two, the running of the cattle, the trampled under who is hallowed ground where this town. Was built when no one was looking, and those hollow groans that no one was making. Whistleblowers blew. The whole town council. I conclude our chant and our chant. The odd and dead parade. And one by one, those difficult decisions. Had their run, and all in time shares sign on cattle without a face. Now that will be the rain. 